What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Roller Coaster Tycoon with me, Dr. D-Dub. Uh, so this is where we left off. Uh, we had just built the merry-go-round. Uh, I went ahead and took a look at the last video I made, or I guess the first video I made. And between reviewing that video and a comment I got from one of my subscribers, I realized I did not do the greatest job of explaining everything I was doing. Uh, so I'm going to try and do that a little bit more. Um, I know there's a lot of icons up here at the top I have yet to explain. I'll get to those as I use them. But I've been building a lot of rides and I have yet to really go in through the menu here and kind of explain what each one does. So as... Let me go ahead and build this real quick and open it up so we can make money while we're talking. Um, and I will go ahead and explain what all these things do. So this first view here mutes... If you click on it, it mutes everything except the audio coming from... Actually, I think it just mutes the um, the hustle and bustle of the crowd. You can hear the music coming from the merry-go-round, but you can't hear any of the people walking and talking. Uh, here, you can look at the different views that you have for the ride. Uh, for this, there's really not many different views. They're not going to do much of anything. Uh, but if you have a roller coaster with different carts, you can look at the individual carts themselves. You can look at the station. You can look at the ride as a whole. Um, so those are the options there. Again, it doesn't make that much of a difference for the Ferris wheel. Uh, on the right here, you can close the ride. You can test the ride. Um, it's not super necessary for these type of rides, but for attractions, um, it's definitely a bigger deal because you want to test them and you can get your your ratings here by testing the ride so you know whether or not it's good or not prior to actually opening the ride let me go ahead and pause this real quick while we're discussing this this might take a little bit and i don't want to waste any of our precious time we have to build the park uh, so right here is the construction mode you can click this and you have to close it but for uh, roller coasters and whatnot you would have to close the ride you go into construction mode and that allows you to actually edit the track and i'm sure we'll use that quite a bit once we start start building roller coasters uh, you guys have seen me use this quite a bit it's the naming tool you can rename your ride again we'll just keep it at ferris wheel for now um this locates it on the main view so if you were way over here and you wanted to go to this ride you click that and it drags your view to the coaster itself and then the trash can demolishes the ride and you get some of your money back but not all of it that's it for this first tab the second one um, show vehicle details and options on a ferris wheel you don't have any options there's no other option than a ferris wheel on other coasters you can change like how the ride launches whether it just goes out of the uh, station at a normal pace whether it goes out backwards whether it gets launched out of the station uh, we'll cover that more when we get to a ride that actually uses it um, this is the options or the settings sort of for the um, for the ride itself um, you can change the rotation option here actually i think i misspoke this allows you to change the cart type so there's no other option than a ferris wheel but on some you can have like log cars or snail shaped cars i don't know remember we'll get there when we get there uh, this is the rotation option or the launch mode uh, number of rotations per uh, payment so they pay to get on the ride and they run the ride or it goes in two complete rotations before they get off uh, down here is the reliability it's 100 percent reliable that means it is never broken down once it breaks down it'll show a percentage less than that and then the downtime is the percentage of the time since the ride has been open that the ride has been closed or not closed but closed due to it being broken and then again the inspection time down here and time since last inspection or since when it was built because that we just built this one minute ago uh, color scheme we already covered this you can change the color of the structure you can change the color of the wheel itself uh, and here you can actually change the style of the entrance um, canvas wooden and the structure you can see the color options change based on what you choose this one can have two different colors and it makes the entrance themed the same as the ride itself so we'll stick with plain for now and change that back to i don't remember what it was we'll do white and white sure that looks good okay these are your measurements and options or measurements and test data Again, excitement, intensity, nausea. I covered that last video. How fun it is, how intense it is. Everyone's got their preference, and then how much it's going to make them want to throw up. 
and we covered this as well how much you can set the ride's price i have it free right now i'll charge them buck 50 and then how much it makes per hour how much it costs to run per hour how much you're making your net profit per hour and then how much you have made period they don't factor in um, your running cost into your total profit here so that's how much you made in the ride's existence and then this last tab here shows the kind of the customer info uh, you can see how many customers have ridden it per hour uh, how popular it is the more obviously 100 percent popularity means almost everyone that has approached the line has gone on the line uh, with a popularity rating of 20 percent. that means one out of five people that have looked at this ride walked to the entrance and said i want to go on this um, one out of five people have done that satisfaction um, I don't think the ride has been open long enough to have a actual satisfaction rating. Uh, but once it's been open for a while, we can check back and it'll show us how satisfied people are with the ride. Uh, the queue time, this is the average wait time people have to wait in line for in order to get on the ride. Uh, the longer this is, the more unhappy people will get waiting for your ride. And that's where entertainers come into play. And we'll hire some of those later once we get some rides with longer lines that that will actually come into play. Then you've got total customers, how many people have paid to go on this ride, not just gone on for free, because you can see we have people on it right now, zero customers, but just since I've paused it, we've increased the price. Um, so that should update once people actually start paying for the ride, and it shows you when it was built. When it was built, it will always say this year for this uh, first part, because it ends in October of year one, so that's not going to change. And then here, you can actually have it play music. Uh, this is what I was looking for uh, last episode at the end for the Ferris wheel. I couldn't find it, but here it is. You can change the music from the ride. I don't do this on too many rides. Um, the, the carousel or merry-go-round uh, defaults to having that kind of circus style music. And I keep that just because I think it fits the, fits the mood. But if you have two rides playing music right next to each other, it doesn't sound so great. So I'll do them kind of throughout the park or if I have a big coaster, I'll put some intense music on it just to kind of add to the theme. Uh, and then lastly, over here on the right, you can look at the thoughts of your guests related to this ride. So here are the thoughts. Everything is pertaining to Ferris wheel, except this one says haunted house for whatever reason. Uh, but you can see they all think it's a good value and some people want to go on something a little bit more thrilling than this. Um, this button here, you can see who's currently riding it. And then this last one here, show guests in line for the attraction. You can see all the guests that are in line. So there's 15 people waiting for this ride. Okay, that's it for this menu. Let's continue building the park. Uh, so as I said last time, we're gonna build our first custom coaster today. And I'm gonna hold off on building the more epic ones for a little bit later, probably next episode. But we are, guests are commenting that your park entrance fee is very cheap. Perhaps you could increase the entrance fee to make more money. I'm gonna do that. Like I said, your guests will comment and give you feedback, possibly that things are too cheap. And so thank you guests, I will definitely take more of your money. Uh, whenever I get that message, I'll usually increase it by $5 at a time. They'll give you the message again uh, later if they think it's still too cheap, but for now a $5 increase I think is plenty. Uh, so let's go ahead and build our first custom ride. Uh, we don't have I want to build a steel coaster. Uh, we don't have it yet, so if I go to the research and development tab, this science beaker here, um, next, oh no, it's the last development was the log flume. Next thing will be the information kiosk. Okay, so I can't tell when I'll be getting that next one, but I know an information kiosk is coming soon, and those are very important to the growth of your park. So, what are our options? Let's go ahead and build. Let's build a log flume. That sounds fun. So a log flume is your typical... Actually, let me go back to that. It's your typical log car, I don't know, log boat on a pipe, a half, a half pipe filled with water, basically. Uh, it's supported by a box section steel supports. Boats are propelled up slopes on rollers and then are free to travel along the water channel at their own pace. Um, so when you build a custom ride, you can either build a custom design or some presets. And you can see the floor plan or the layout, the footprint of it, um, the space that it would take up, and it will give you the cost down there in the bottom left. How much is this going to cost? 
Uh, if you build it on a hill or something, which would require extra supports under a part of it, but not others, the price will actually reflect that. So it's more expensive the more supports you have to build the ride. Uh, and these are some other options here. And if you click on any of these, you can actually see a photo of it. But as fun as pre-built rides are, I'm going to do a custom one because I just think it adds so much more to pretty much everything. It's a lot more fun and to me that's where the real fun of this comes in. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate my view with this arrow up here. Okay. Alright, we'll start it right there. This is super important, this information kiosk. We'll come back to this in just a second. So an information kiosk, we'll go ahead and build one of these. Information kiosks allow your guests to purchase maps and umbrellas. The larger your uh, park gets, the more important maps are. Uh, if they're all the way at the far end, uh, like I said last time, their pathfinding mechanics, they randomly choose a direction. If they get to the point where they want to leave your park and they randomly select a path to get back and they cannot find their way back, they will get very unhappy and they will just your park rating will decrease because of that. So if you have maps, it helps their pathfinding ability. It makes them able to find the entrance much easier. So, or I guess for them at that point, it would be the exit. Uh, umbrella price. Umbrellas also uh, prevent satisfaction or your park rating from decreasing uh, whenever it rains. You saw in the first episode, it rained very early on. There's nothing I could do about that. But now, as soon as it starts raining, people are going to buy these like crazy. Uh, we can actually change the color of the umbrella. Let's do let's do blue. Let's add some color. Actually, no, we already have blue. Uh, let's do yellow. Sounds good. And I think it's yellow and white. So, okay, that's open. And back to our ride. Okay, so if I want to resume construction on this ride, hit the construction bar or button. Okay, so right now I'm building the station. Uh, the longer of a station you have, the more cars. Uh, or in this case, log flumes or log carts. What are they even called? Log flume boats. The more log flume boats we can have, uh, which means the longer line we can have because more people will be able to ride it at the same time. So this ride, I think I can close this out. Yeah. So this, how much money do we have? Six grand? That should be plenty. So if you do an incline, it's on sort of a, a belt fed or a kind of a conveyor belt style increase. So I'm gonna bring that up. Okay, that's too high for supports. So if that's the case, I have to level it out. We'll go ahead and turn it. And then for this ride, and every ride has their own quirks, um, there's special uh, tracks you can build. So I can do an S-bend like that. It moves it over, if you look at the ground, it moves it over just one block, whereas in, or tile, moving it this way, if I were to do that and then that you can see it brings it over one two three three blocks so if you're trying to fit things in a narrow space which oftentimes i do those can come in very handy and again with the uh, excitement ratings and intensity ratings each ride is going to have variable uh, factors that come into play when building a ride so right now I'm just kind of meandering this about. I like to keep them kind of in a tight space um, just to save room in your park. We'll see if I can go up and back over this one. No, I can't. So all these uh, height markers show you what level they're at. So this is at level 11 uh, at this block right here. And I am one before that, so I'm also at 11. So I need to go two blocks or two tiles further, I believe so I can make that happen. because so I want to go back over that track and then back down. So I need to clear it with at least 13. There we go. So 14 is plenty high. And we'll drop that back down again. I will definitely be test running this so you guys can see how it all works. But I understand this might not make the most sense currently, but Actually, we're gonna do an S-bend here. S-bend to the left. Beautiful. Okay, so one of our rides just broke down. If we go look at that here in a bit, our mechanic should be taking care of it. 
but this is more important right now. So, okay, so we got them going up, looping back around. They've got one, two, three big drops, and a fourth kind of smaller one. And then we will just end this right here and see where this puts us as far as excitement goes. It's probably not going to be super exciting, but that's okay. It's our first ride. It's kind of trial and error. Um, one thing that hasn't really mattered on all these other rides that I built so far is where the entrance and exit are actually placed. So if you have them enter all the way down here, they've got to enter onto the track, walk all the way down to the front, and then get on the cart. And once it's full, they will launch. So if you put the entrance at the front and the exit kind of near the back, it makes the line move a lot quicker because as soon as they walk in, they can hop on the car and go on the ride. So if I close that out, should bring up the menu here. Okay, let's test one of those and close it down. So it'll give us our settings or our um, intensity ratings. You can see it hasn't run once yet. So it doesn't have any of that data yet. You can either test it or you can open it, but one car has to go all the way through the ride for it to actually uh, give you test results. So what are our options for this one? Log flume boats is our only cart style. You can adjust how many boats. There's really no reason to uh, decrease the number of boats unless you have a ride style where the carts are connected uh, because then you have basically, let's say three trains with five carts per train. If you adjust those numbers, you can try to get it to where you have a larger number of total carts, uh, which in turn increases how many people can ride your ride at a time. And it also does affect your um, test results. If you've ever been on a roller coaster and you've been like in the very front on a really long car, as soon as you go down like a really steep decline, you end up just sitting there suspended facing straight down and a lot of people like that and it's really fun or if you're in the back you while the front of that car is dangling over the edge you're still going up the the uh, ramp or the chain lift so once that once you get pulled over you get whipped over the top and a lot of people like that as well uh, it changes kind of the feel of the ride and that is no different in this game all right so Where's our cart? It's going up that second one. We're gonna go ahead and open this anyway. We'll see how how well it does. Okay, so that cart just went for no reason. I don't know why that went. Um, one thing to change here is, so it's on continuous circuit mode, which means it's gonna do one entire loop. Uh, wait for full load. I can actually change that to wait for a half load. So these cars, I believe, seat four passengers per boat. So if I change that to a half load or quarter load, that would fit, or it would launch once two people were in line or were on the car. And since I have it set to full load, it will wait until one car is completely full of people before it launches. With this ride, it's gonna be popular enough. I think full load is just fine. If it ever wasn't popular, I might drop that down because if only three people are on the line or in the line and they wanna get on the ride, they have to wait until a fourth person shows up. So if you have it set to something other than that, it becomes potentially problematic for your line. So, is it back yet? No, that's it there. Okay, we'll name this something else, something not generic. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a custom name, but moving forwards, if you guys ever have uh, names for rides you want me to use, either whether they're based off of a real ride in real life or you just have a cool name that fits kind of the theme I'm going for. Uh, I'm not really theming these too much right now, but once we get into some of the other uh, parks with different objectives and have more time, I will definitely do a little bit more of that. So um, let's name this. I don't know. Aqua Serpentine. It does a little snaking around. It's water based. I don't know. I'll get more creative once I <laughs> once I get back into the swing of things with this game. Okay, there's our first custom, I don't know if you could call it a roller coaster, but custom ride. I think it's it's not bad. If we zoom out here using the plus and minus buttons, we can kind of get a look at the whole thing. And you can see that line is definitely picking up. So I think I can make this not free. I always forget to adjust those prices. Let's make this $2. See how people think. Or see what people think about it. 
Okay, what else? I think during that we got a notification that our price was too cheap. So let's go ahead and up the ante there. And we're going to end this by building one last ride here. And it, this is going to be a pre-built one. I like building my own custom versions of this later on, but this is just such an awesome pre-built ride. I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. So this is, which one is it? A shuttle loop. It's very simple. They go out of the station, over the loop, up, and they actually go back down, do the loop again, and back into the station. So we'll go ahead and build this. How are we going to extend our park? We'll do it from that exit there. So this can go... Let's do it right here. That looks good. So again, entrance near the front, exit near the back. And we need path... We need to extend our park out. So, so far, I've been building somewhat concise. I like to keep my parks nice and uh, congested, I guess. Uh, your guests will actually complain about the park being too crowded if it gets too overcrowded. Uh, you can see most of my people are in lines currently, so I'm not too worried about congestion on the pathways. But if you ever do get that message, it'll pop up down here just like your guests are commenting that blah blah blah, your park is too crowded. Uh, it's important to expand out your park so that people have room to walk and that the pathways aren't too congested. So we'll go ahead and extend this out to here, give them an exit, and then we will loop this around. This is kind of a popular ride, so I don't mind making the line a little bit longer than what we have been doing. So let's, let's do that. We'll go ahead and give this a test. Close it. You can see it launches out of the station, up the track, and back down. There's a lot of rides like this in the real world that have the same exact design. I don't know exactly what it's called, but... So here you can see this tab coming into play. Uh, powered launch mode. So if I have it set to continuous circuit mode, it would just leave the station like normal, not have enough power to go up this since it's not a chain lift, and it would fall right back down. So if you set it to powered launch mode, you can actually adjust the speed at which it launches uh, you can also see it's not set to wait for a full load. So I'm going to go ahead and wait for a full load. Because that holds how many people? Four per train. We have one train and there's four cars per train. So this will hold 16 people, which once we get this ride open and we're going to have a decent line for this. This is a very popular ride. Or at least I hope it will be. It usually is. This one typically does well. Any of the custom, or not custom, any of the pre-built rides, um, like these here, and there's a lot of different designs here, any of those pretty much always do well, because you can already see their excitement and intensity ratings. Man, people just want me to take their money. Um, so you can already see their excitement and intensity ratings, but when you build one of your own, there's a lot of factors, like I said, that go into that. Uh, and sometimes you'll have a really intense ride that's not exciting in the slightest, and that is not something people want to go on. They want the opposite of that, usually. They want something very exciting, and that ranges in intensity. But if your intensity ever outdoes your excitement, it's usually not the best thing. And we'll just give this the same name that it was given to begin with, Shuttle Loop. Hit OK with our giant cursor. And let's actually change the colors of this. I don't like this brown. I think that's boring. Um, let's do let's do something vibrant. So you can change the track or the main part of the track there. I think this is going to be the edge of the track. And then you can change the support colors. Let's make this blue. No, we'll make that white and this blue. Nice and patriotic, and we'll kind of do the same color scheme here. Beautiful. Uh, and here, there's only one train for this ride, but if you ever were to have multiple, you could do different colors per train or per vehicle. So if I did different colors per vehicle, I could actually give a custom color to each different car. I'm not going to do that right now, but the option's there. And you can see there's a lot of people in line for this. Okay, that broke. Let's look at our mechanic and see how quickly he fixes it. 
You can see he's headed for the swinging ship. Oh, he's right there. I missed him. Yep, he's fixing it right now. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to hire a few more staff just to clean up our park. And again, we will uncheck the mowing grass option. And if there's any of this stuff, if you guys want to see everything I'm doing, I'm more than happy to show you. But if there's stuff like this, I understand hiring staff, placing them, setting their pathways is not the most exciting thing ever. If you guys don't want to see that, just let me know and I will gladly skip through this stuff and just show you the, the building and the layout of my park and all that. So uh, we'll hire another mechanic. And if we click this button here on the staff page, you can see where I have so I can see the footpaths or the patrol areas for my mechanics that are already covered. So I have a different mechanic here and I want him to not, well, I want him basically to cover these other rides, not the ones we already have in existence. So he needs to be able to walk on this pathway here. He needs to get the merry-go-round and he also needs to be able to get the log food. So, now we have two mechanics, each with different jobs. Why he's walking in the grass, I could not tell you. All right. That is our one custom coaster, which is clearly doing very well. Let's go ahead and rotate our view back around here. 70 people in line. That is the maximum number of people I can have in this line. So obviously, this needs to be more expensive. I'm going to up it to $3. Let's see how fun it is. Okay, so it's medium excitement, low intensity, low nausea. That's good. It's almost not quite double, but that is definitely good. That's what we want. So I'd say that is a successful first coaster. And in next episode, we will build our first wooden coaster. Those are probably one of my favorites to build. You can slope the curves. You can do a lot of stuff with them. And I think they're a lot of fun to build. So, and I hope you guys will think they're just as fun to watch me build. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, if you have any comments or feedback, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, and again, if you don't want to see me do some of the quote-unquote boring stuff, hiring staff, building walkways, doing all the kind of tedious stuff, let me know and I will gladly cut that stuff out for you guys. So, thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys next time.